Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and Apple announced the first features we've seen that will officially be coming to iOS 17 when it launches to the public. The new features are some great accessibility features that I think will help a lot of people be able to use their technology a little bit better or have it assist them to make life easier. We'll go over those new features and the devices that are required to support those features. But first I wanted to go over two new features that were announced today that are available everywhere right now. Now iOS 16.5 five is not out yet, but it doesn't require that to see these features and they have to do with music. If we go into the music app, go under the browse tab, tap on new on Apple music, you can see new set lists. These set lists actually show when people are playing in different cities. So different artists, if we scroll down here, we can browse upcoming shows and within those browse upcoming shows. It shows all the different dates, different locations, and more. We can go directly in here. So this one in particular, we can add it to the calendar. We can see where it's located at Ruth Eckerd Hall in Clearwater, Florida. We can experience more on Shazam as well. Additionally, Apple added this information within Apple Maps. So if you go to a major city such as London, and then you go down to the guides section, we'll explore guides. And within guides, you can see some new ones that have been added for music in particular. London's best classical music venues, where to see acoustic music in London, London's beloved DIY music venues, and even more. If we go into one of these, the acoustic music venues, you can see the best venues for acoustic performance in London, see different information about it, and You'll see here as we scroll down, see things that are nearby as well. So this is available in major cities such as London and New York City and some others, and we'll be rolling out more and more as Apple adds that information, but they're personalized guides that are done by people. When it comes to iOS 17, Apple has announced new features that will be for accessibility when it launches to the public. Just like last year, we had the ability to control our Apple Watch with our iPhone, and they announced this ahead of iOS 16. This year, there's a bunch of other features they're announcing as well. If we go to their newsroom press release, you can see here it says Apple introduces new features for cognitive accessibility along with live speech, personal voice, and point and speak and magnifier. So let's go through each one of these. As we scroll down, the first one says assistive access supports users with cognitive disabilities. Now, Apple actually says this distills the experience across the camera, photos, music, calls and messages apps, and breaks them down to their essential features in order to lighten their cognitive load for users. And you can see some of their examples here. So photos has just a few different photos here, making it easier to see camera has one single button to take a photo. You'll see calls has much larger options as well as different text options. And as we scroll down, you can see even more. Some of this looks like what we saw with nine to five max leak of what we thought was coming with iOS 16.2. Very large icons for your home screen with an all new layout. And you can see what it would look like here. So we would have a singular button for music, calls, messages, photos, and camera. And the same thing is true on iPad. So if we take a look at what that could look like, very large icons, making it easy to press on the iPad. And maybe they'll add more apps in the future, but it starts with these apps on iPhone and iPad. It also allows for customization and, like I said, that emoji only keyboard to express what maybe you can't speak. So that's something that kind of goes into the next feature set of live speech and personal voice advanced speech accessibility. And what this is, is it allows you to record your voice and have it create a voice that sounds like yours. And if we scroll down here, you can see that you can read a phrase and you can create a personal voice by reading along with a randomized set of text prompts. And then it says to record 15 minutes of audio on iPhone or iPad. So this personal voice can be created using an iPhone an iPad and Mac with Apple silicon and will be available in English to start. And what it allows you to do is once you have that information, you can then type out what you want it to say. So you'll see here, it sort of rolls into what we had with iOS 16, where you should have the ability to type back when someone's talking to you through FaceTime, but now it's in your own personalized voice. So you can see here, if someone was speaking to you, you can respond with the keyboard and it will respond with your voice back. So this is something that's using AI, of course, to generate your voice. And I can't wait to see what this sounds like and try it in the future. 
Now we also have new modes for magnifier. So if we scroll down, you'll see detection mode in magnifier introduces a point and speak for users who are blind or have low vision. And this is a great thing. So if we go back, this sort of works alongside what we had with magnifier already identifying things such as doors and more. Now, if we take a look at their video, let's press play. Good time. Pizza. Power level. Add 30 seconds. You can see as they bring their finger over the top of what they're looking at, it actually reads that off to them. So this is using AI, of course, in the neural engine. And of course, a nice little touch as far as details go is it says 941. This is using phones with LIDAR sensors. It requires that as it needs that to use things in the magnifier to identify distances to things. So it's using your camera in combination with the LIDAR sensor to read and then understand what's in front of you. So that's something that's really great and it uses that and can identify things in different languages. Now this is going to be available to certain languages to start. So Apple has actually said it will be available in English, French, Italian, German, Spanish, Portuguese, Chinese, Cantonese, Korean, Japanese, and Ukrainian. So that's what it will start with. And hopefully they'll add more in the future, but that's a pretty good subset, at least to start with, to have it identify a ton of different objects and help those who are visually impaired or just need a little extra help. Now there's additional features as well. You'll see here, they just list them off. They don't show examples of them, but deaf or hard of hearing users can pair made for iPhone hearing devices directly to Mac and customize them for their hearing comfort. Then also this requires an M1 or M2 processor or Apple Silicon in general. Voice control is adding phonetic su suggestions. And so that's a really nice update. And also users with physical and motor disabilities who use switch control can turn any switch into a virtual game controller for games on iPhone and iPad. Also text size is now easier to adjust for different apps. And then also users who are sensitive to rapid animations can automatically pause images with moving elements. For those who use voiceover, you can now adjust the speed at which it speaks back to you from 0.8x to two times. Additionally, sign time is launching in Germany, Italy, Spain, and South Korea on May 18th. So some of these features are actually coming before iOS 17. So also we have an update for shortcuts where it adds remember this, which helps users with cognitive disabilities, create a visual diary and notes for easy reference and reflection. This is maybe something to go along with that new diary app that we're expecting or sort of daily journal app that we're expecting for iOS 17. Maybe that has to go along with that. So then we'll have this week with Apple podcasts, offering more, more shows about more accessibility technology and much more. So those things we know for sure are coming with iOS 17. Now, as far as supported devices, Apple actually hasn't said they're getting rid of any devices, but they won't officially say until it launches to the public, or at least is shown off at WWDC on June 5th. So whether or not we're still going to have iPhone eight and eight plus support, while it seems likely not all features would roll out to those, but at least we'll have certain things supported on these devices. Hopefully eight, eight plus and iPhone 10 with similar processors will support it. However, Apple has not officially said which devices support iOS 17 yet, but we should know that on June 5th. Other additional features we're expecting are things like changes to the control center, the lock screen, and much more. So I'm looking forward to all of the different changes with iOS 17. Again, we should see iOS 17, at least what features it has on June 5th. And then typically that day we'll have iOS 17 beta one for developers and a public release before the next iPhone, which is iPhone 15 sometime in mid September. So I look forward to all of that and watch OS 10 and much more, probably the Apple AR VR headset and other things, hopefully that we're not expecting. And we'll have a bit of a surprise. Let me know if you'll be using those accessibility features in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. And of course, if you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, I'll link it in the description like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.